Yes, it's me, the Madcap Gamer. No, it is not another Talking Heads video because, yes, they are out there on the YouTubes. Warhammer Fantasy vs. Age of Sigma. Oh, which one's better? Let's talk about it. But this is Warhammer we are talking about, and is there any way to settle a debate in Warhammer that does not involve bloodshed? I think not. So, that is what we are going to do in this video. Here we are to settle the debate once and for all. Warhammer vs. Age of Sigma. Let's just have a game of Warhammer vs. Age of Sigma. We have our Warhammer 5th edition Beastman Army Horde ready to go versus an Age of Sigma Beastman Horde. Also, exactly the same size. The armies have the same amount of models, not the same points values to make this an even game because if I try to make it the same point values, then neither of these armies would work. Um, Age of Sigma, this amount of models right here comes to about 330 points, and over here, exactly the same amount of models with zero magic items and magic banners, any of that stuff, comes to well over 1,000 100 points. So obviously, in a straight up match where points are concerned, if we had 2,000 point armies, Age of Sigma would absolutely win, just from sheer numbers. So, we instead went for the same models. So that's the gist of it. We are going to play Warhammer 5th Edition versus Age of Sigma with the same army of Beastmen, exactly the same models. Now, Couple of things before we get started. I will be playing this game against myself because the mental arithmetic of playing in two entirely different rule sets um, is not something I would wish upon anyone. So, I'll be taking the reins here. The other thing I would say, um, if you are going to try something like this to prove to yourself and decide once and for all Warhammer versus Age of Sigma, decide which realm you are playing in um, to start with, like where the, um, whether you're going to be playing in Age of Sigma realm and whether you're going to be playing in 5th edition realm. Just because um, if there are any, you know, rules that clash, you can go, well, this, this is Warhammer 5th edition land, so we'll go with Warhammer 5th edition uh, rules. Other than that, to keep it neat and tidy, I will simply be, when it's Age of Sigma Beastman's turn, the Age of Sigma rules will apply. They will play their game their round exactly like they would in Age of Sigma. This is not going to be Age of Sigma Beastman playing with the constrictions of Warhammer 5th Edition. They're just going to be playing as if we we're playing a game of Age of Sigma. And same with the 5th Edition um, Realm of Chaos Beastman. So they are going to play exactly like it was their game. Um, fifth edition, you'll see as the game goes by how they differ greatly. We are playing fifth edition uh, land rules, uh, general game rules. So we've got a pitch battle from the fifth edition rule book, and I've already done the rolls, and it is going to be a four turn game because you used to do that in fifth edition. You used to roll at the start of the game and see how many turns it would go for. So it's only four turns. Let's get cracking. So here we are set up for our pitch battle game, our 5th edition over here, our Age of Sigma, ready to take them on even with their herd stone. So just to keep things simple, I will just be taking an all herd um, beastman, so I've got all the abilities, all the command traits, all the artifacts of power and stuff all set out for me, I don't have to do any of those weird picking things. Um, I've also got my beastman book set up over there, like I said, no uh, magic items or anything picked out for the beastmen because they were hundreds and hundreds of points more than the um, Age of Sigma beastmen anyway. So I, I guess that means they should do okay. Maybe. We'll find out. As we get into turn one, uh, we'll do red dice for Age of Sigma. See who gets the first turn. Ooh, they've got a six. They're ready to go. 5th edition beastmen on a 3. So we'll start with our command phase, obviously, and we will use the call, um, the bestial call, pro booming roar. 
So at the start of the turn, they get a primordial call point, and the commander will give them the Beast Lord, give them another primordial call point, um, and we'll put that up there for turn one. Uh, the Shaman uh, can't really do anything at this distance to the other Beastmen, so he might just try and cast a Mystic Shield. Not that there's much point, but just in case the 5th edition Beastmen get lucky, we'll do a Mystic Shield on the Minotaurs, or the Bulgors, sorry. That's going to happen a lot. And Snake Eyes, no deal. No casting. Nada. Let's get the movement phase done then, shall we? I am going to go ahead and do the run with the Gore because they can do a run and still charge. And they get the full six. So, now off like a shot. We're going to go around this side because I think I can pull away. If I know anything about rank bonuses from 5th edition, we want to get them on their side. All right, that is the end of the movement phase. The uh, Gores got their extra one inch move, so they have gone forward a whopping 13 inches in the movement phase, and everyone else has decided to run. The Gores can get a chance to charge, but nobody else will. Brings us to shooting, of course there isn't any, so we'll try a charge. Let's see how close these Gores manage to get after a 13 inch move, just out of range. No charges for this turn. And with that, it's Age of Sigmar's turn one over, and we go over to fifth edition. Let's see if we can remember how fifth edition rules work. Start of turn. So before we do anything, these scores are gonna take their infighting test um, to make sure that they can do anything this turn. So they use their leadership if they fail, they stand around and try and beat each other up, but they otherwise don't suffer at all. They just can't do anything this turn, uh, movement-wise. So we're going to use the General's Leadership, because he's within 12, and that's a thing. And we are going to get a 6, 7, 8, and the General's Leadership is 9. So they are good to move. Now, we have to declare charges first. I know that that is not in range for a charge, so they're just going to move... They're happy four inches. Um, everyone else, it does become the movement phase. Um, the Minotaurs move six, um, I think it's six inches, might be five. Either way, you have to just double your movement in the charge phase in fifth edition to get a charge in. And I don't think that's 12 inches. And you can't pre-measure in 5th edition, so looks like just movement on this side of the board. It's going to have to be a bit of a wheel. We might just have to take the charge of the Gores. Big Shaman will wander over here, stay close to the units. We might do something that you can only do in 5th edition, because 5th edition, and we might have the Beast Lord join this unit of Minotaurs, so I'm going to manoeuvre them because it looks like they're going to get charged soon, so I'm not going to move them forward. I'm going to move them across ways, sort of join them up with the character. Why not? Um, I'll leave the Shaman out because I kind of want him a little bit back. I want him to be casting spells. Now, you've forgotten the spell phase, you might say, and you'd be wrong because in 5th edition, magic comes last, after everything. So, we are going to go to the magic phase for 5th edition. So he's got his two spells in here, and I am going to choose the blue fire, because why not? Now, I don't have any of the magic cards, um, because somehow, over the years, the magic cards have gone missing, but... There's a rule for that. Um, if you have the Warhammer rulebook, uh, which came out different, uh, separately from the Magic rulebook, um, it actually states in there that uh, if you don't have the Magic stuff yet, then just uh, imagine that every wizard can cast one of their spells per turn, and that every enemy wizard can try and dispel. So you can cast automatically one spell without having to roll, and the enemy gets a five or six to dispel it. 
So that is what we are going to do. This shaman is going to cast Blue Fire Revenge, which is 18 inch range on, I think I'm gonna try and get the enemy Beast Lord because that was one of the good things about 5th edition magic. You could target enemy characters, unlike the archers and stuff. So 18 inch range, just in, and we are going to cast Blue Fire of Zench. So our enemy shaman gets a chance to dispel it. Let's see how he goes. He needs a five or a six. He does not, he only gets a two. So, D6. Five, strength four. Now, how do you play Warhammer 5th edition versus Age of Sigma when there's no strength values in? Well, we've got that sorted out. Basically, if I need a toughness roll, I can go back to 5th edition and compare what the toughness used to be of these characters. And of course, Beast Lords, Toughness 5, so let's assume that through Age of Sigma, um, the toughness is generally the same. So if that's tough, straight 4 against Toughness 5, we are going to need Mr. Shaman Man and your Blue Fire, 5s and 6s. Let's see. What a roll. 4 out of 5. Strength 4. Now, normal armor saves apply, but of course in 5th edition, Armor saves are affected by strength, and strength four will reduce your armor by one. Our Beast Lord has a save of four, which with a strength four attack will be reduced by one. So he needs a five up save for our Beast Lord. He gets one, three wounds go through, which of course leaves our Beast Lord with two wounds left. Ouch. Age of Sigma takes first injury, not first blood. Of course, that's the magic phase, which means it's the end of fifth edition's turn. No more fifth edition goes. So um, here is where I was saying earlier, it is good to decide which realm you are playing in, whether it's the fifth edition realm or whether it's the uh, Age of Sigma realm, because things like this, turn sequence. So for turn sequence, we're gonna play fifth edition style. So no swapping and changing of the turns as they start. So it'll just go automatically to the Age of Sigma player next rather than a roll off. So let's go to turn two. Age of Sigma player will of course get a primordial call point and he'll use his raw to get another primordial call point. Turn two. Let's see what happens. So, now the spell I've taken, just to keep in the theme for this shaman, is of course Vile Tide, and I don't think that anyone is within 12 inches. All right, we'll do Mystic Shield on the Minotaurs. They are going up on the Bull Gores. They are going up against Minotaurs after all, and they get it. So, Mystic Shield in play. All right. Let's get into our movement phase and we'll be right back. And here we are at the end of the movement phase. The Gores flubbed their run this time, so they only got to move forward eight, so they didn't get to quite surround the fifth edition Gores, but they are definitely in a good spot for a charge. The Shaman and Warlord have moved up. The Minotaurs, Bull Gores, ugh, sorry, have moved up ready for a charge also. We've done our magic phase and command phase, we've got no shooting, so we are going to go on to our charge phase. And here it comes, Gauze versus Gauze. Charging in, two dice, five inches. <sighs> only, only just, but definitely making it in, but not the surround and slaughter that they were going for will be, I'll check on the other charges um, and then we'll move those guys up and check back in. So the Lord charging the other Beast Lord, but the whole unit in general, really. Oh, he's only got a six. That could be a little bit of a disaster. And it is, there is no way that he's making it to 
the Beast Lord and his Minotaurs. Can the other Bulgors get in there and do the damage they need to do? They've got a six. Again, exactly the same results. And they're further away. This is bad news. We will come back after the Gores have moved up. Hopefully they can win the day. And here we are with our Gores move and pile incomplete. They have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. I am going to say twelve in range to swing. Now there's also more than twenty models in the unit, which means double attacks plus one attack, which makes it twenty-four. And the foe render the champion makes it twenty-five attacks against the lowly gores in front of them. I'm going to roll these ones and then the other ones. They need fours and fours for the gore attacks. Now, hits for the gores. Now they need to do this again. Oh, that was a three. Fours a second time. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight wounds. And now these gores have been armed with a shield. No light armor, which makes them a six up save. Halberds and shields, these fifth edition goals. So, how many sixes to save? One six. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which makes, as they have two wounds apiece in fifth edition, these goals, three of them will go down. One, two, three, and one of them. The old turnaround trick has been wounded. Ouch, that is tough. So we have. Now it's time to fight back. There's no other combats. So the Gores will strike back. Now in 5th edition, they can only fight in one rank, not one inch or any of that nonsense. The first rank is the only one that gets to fight. And if anyone has been killed, then the next rank is moving up and they can't fight at all. So. Three of these uh, dudes will not be able to fight. That leaves the musician, the champion, and the one other dude. They will have um, two attacks from the regular guys, and we'll get two green ones out because 5th edition champions have different weapon skill and different strength, as well as an extra attack. So it will be, because they're strength 4 and beastmen in the old days were toughness 4, and of course... They're both beastmen, so why wouldn't they have the same weapon skill? It'll be fours and fours for the regulars, and threes and threes for the champion. To take out Age of Sigma. Okay, so two hits, and both of them were the champion, which means threes and wound. One wound only. Now the champion is strength five. If you are strength five, you lose two um, of your arm save, rend two for those Age of Sigma players. So if he's got two rend, because he's strength five, two rend, and these guys have a five up save, four are up because they have shields and they're in combat. So that becomes a six up save. They do not make, so they lose one. One against three. Now, we need to resolve Battle Shock. Of course, in 5th edition, things work a little bit differently to work out who's won the combat. So, we add up the ranks, every rank of at least four. We add a standard, if there's a standard in the unit. So, the Age of Sigma Beastmen have wounds. The Age of Sigma Beastmen just add up the wounds that they've caused. So, they've caused three. We've got one, two, three ranks plus one. So the fifth edition have caused four for their combat total. There's two standards, so they'll cancel each other out. So actually, the fifth edition Beastman Gore win by one. So our Gore, Age of Sigma Gore here are going to take their leadership test, their bravery of six, I want to say it's five. So, they lost by one. Let's see how they go. Ooh. Add one, five, two, five, that's six. So one other guy will go down. Fifth edition rules, uh, you only take 
a break test or a leadership test if you lose the combat. They didn't lose the combat, so we'll say these gorse are sticking around. And that ended up evening out quite nicely. Let's go round two, fifth edition. Starting the turn as fifth edition beastmen, we do not have to take infighting uh, tests for these guys because they are in combat and they won't take it for combat. Um, I am just going to go right ahead and declare a charge. So I might do another wonderful thing that happens in only in fifth edition, which is to charge my warlord out of combat at the charge him out of the unit into the other warlord, the other beast lord, and the minotaurs will charge over here at the bulgors. And let's see if I can get either of those charges in because it's just straight up double movement. So it's a successful charge. Boom. There we go. We are going to see the two war beast lords face off against each other. The Minotaurs are, of course, movement six, so they are 12 inch. Double their move is definitely going to be in range. And we'll see fifth edition versus Age of Sigma. Now, no shooting again. We'll go through to close combat in Age of Sigma, and of course, not Age of Sigma, in Warhammer fifth edition, which is the rules we'll be playing because we're playing in the world of fifth edition. We have the charges strike first. Um, and keep on striking with the other units then fighting back. So, not like Age of Sigma where you have to pick one and then go back and forth and back and forth. We will stick with the 5th edition rules for this particular bout. Maybe we'll have another game where we play Age of Sigma rules and just dump the 5th edition guys in there. So, we will start with the gore. Why not? One, two, three, four, five, and two for the champion. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we could have, now that I remember, we could have wrapped around. If we win the combat and the opponent doesn't break, we can wrap extra ranks around, but I did genuinely forget to do that. So we'll call it this turn. We won't wrap anybody around or anything like that. So we'll just have our five regular guys doing their attacks and two green ones for the champion. Needing fours for the reds and threes for the greens. See how many gore we could take out. That was a much better roll. Only one miss in all that. And again, threes and fours. Threes for the green, fours for the reds. We have one, two regular hits, and one champion hit. So the regular hits can be saved on a five or six. The Age of Sigma is strength four. So rend one. They both go through. So, let's pull these guys out of the way. So we've got a new combat starting. One down, two down. And the green one is saved on a six. And it does get saved. So two gore only go down. All right, the Beast Lord. Well, the Beast Lord was going to attack, but then I remembered he has a double-handed weapon, which means he always strikes last. So actually, the Age of Sigma Lord will get to strike first, but before he does, we'll go over to the Minotaurs, two Minotaurs and a Minotaur Champion, versus the same for the Bulgors. Now Minotaurs in 5th edition have two attacks each, one extra for the Champion, and of course, an extra weapon skill and an extra strength. They are going up against the same weapon skill and strength and toughness, likely, so we will have Fours and fours for the red, threes and threes for the green. And, wow, all hits, all hits for the first round and wounds on fours and threes. The champion has fluffed it completely. We only have two wounds caused by the Minotaurs themselves. Now the Bulgors. They have a five up save. Of course, champion, uh, not champion, strength four will reduce that save by one, making it a six up save. And of course, re-rolling ones for Mystic Shield. And we got one save. One wound goes through. One wound goes through. <laughs> That's gonna be a long day 
for the Minotaurs as they've got four wounds apiece. Um, there's no extra damage stuff in 5th edition, so that's going to be a tough one. So we might strike back with the Bull Gores first, then we'll go to the Gores, and then we'll do the Lord's Showdown last. Uh, just a reminder that we are going to, when we're playing the Age of Sigmar team, we are just going to go off the book. So rather than working out weapon skill and having an even and whatnot, just going to do what it says to hit and to wound. So, fours and threes, three attacks a piece. Fours and threes, three attacks a piece, plus one for the champion. Don't have to worry about needing to roll different stuff though. So, let's have fours to hit. Ooh, it's not great. And we can't re-roll ones because we don't have any. For the axes, the dual wield axes, threes to wounds. Oh, we got all of the wounds though, and it is rend minus one. Now, these guys over here, these minotaurs, have light armor only, so that's minus one to their armor save. They won't get a save, which means that is two wounds apiece. Two, four, six, eight wounds to start with. Minotaurs have three each, so there's nine wounds in total in front of us. Let's see if the Bulgor Horns will finish them off. They got two attacks each. Two, six. And they are fours and fours. Oh, it's not looking good for the Minotaurs. Three wounds go through. They have zero rends, so six is to save. There's one wound left. No, that is all of the Minotaurs. They were unprepared for all of those two damage rolls. All right, let's go over and see if the Gores showdown with the fifth edition Gores is going to go their way as well. Now, of course, in Age of Sigma rules, we get to Pile in, 16 this time, and they're still over 20. So that gives us 32. That is gonna be way too many to pick up in one roll. Um, plus one for the champion. So, fours and fours. Let's roll it in batches, two hits. And, last lot. There's a lot of hits. I don't know if the Gores, the 5th edition Gores can take this much punishment. Fours, two wounds. It's going to be bloody. Okay. Oh, look out. They've dropped a whole bunch. They have dropped a bunch of wounds. This might be worse than the last. It is markedly worse. Um, they have got five wounds through. The doors with their shields, saving on six. One is saved. That is only two slain. We've still got the dude with his one wound left on the end. We have Beast Lord on Beast Lord. And of course, the Age of Sigmar Beast Lord is going to go first because he does not have double-handed axe. So, he has got six attacks, threes and threes. He's got a hatred of heroes, so he can reroll failed wounds. And he's got one rend. Let's see how he does. He's only got the two wounds left in him. <sighs> Is it gonna be enough for fifth edition Lord to come out on top? Starting with his threes to hit. Oh, he's dropped a couple, but I want to say our dual axe is re-roll ones to hit, which it does. So we're re-rolling these guys. And yeah, that is a lot of hits. That's five hits now. We are doing threes to wounds, and we get to re-roll because we are up against another hero. <sighs> There's only two dropped, and he's re-rolling them. One dropped. That is... Four wounds. They are only, thankfully, one damage apiece. But Beastman Heroes in 5th edition 
did not have a million wounds. They have four wounds, in fact. So this is enough to take out our fifth edition Beast Lord. He has heavy armor with minus one rend. That gives him sixes only. He needs at least one six to stay in the game. Can he do it? He cannot. There's not a single six in there. And the double-handed great weapon gah, means the death of our poor Beast Lord in fifth edition. He did not get to strike at all because of the weight of his weapon, which means, well, oh, fifth edition, it's looking a pretty grim. Only the Gores are holding out. And let's count it up. They suffered two dead models this turn. They killed two, so it is even. However, they have one, two, three ranks still. And double banners mean the banners don't mean anything, so they win by three. Which means it's the Age of Sigmar Gores that have to take their break battle shock test. Bravery, five. They are minus three to the roll. Oh, it's a high one. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven versus five. That is six fleeing dudes. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is a big difference. The old rank bonus, but can they hold out? Technically, because of their rank bonus, that means that the Gauls have won this combat, and this time I shall not forget to do our wrap around. We are going to move two Gauls to either side to fatten out our ranks. We'll lose one of our rank bonuses, so maybe, just maybe, this was in fact a terrible idea, but to hell with it. That's a, what's the point of winning if you can't kill a bunch of gores along the way? That brings us to turn three, and what I think is a pretty good position after a shaky start for Age of Sigma. Let's get into it. So let's get into turn three, and I think we're going to start with using our primordial call points. What do you reckon? Let's summon a... <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Let's get really 5th edition crazy in here. We are going to use our promotive call points and you guessed it, summon a cockatrice to get in there and I guess surround these poor gores who are doing it on their own at the moment. Okay. Oh wait, that's combat over. Hang on, hang on. Um, retroactively. We are going to use our Shaman, because I forgot that he was there um, with the Gores, and he might seek revenge on the Beast Lord. He might do the same thing, uh, shooting the blue fire of Zinch at the Beast Lord who just killed his boss. And let's see if we can take him out. Now, Warhammer 5th Edition rules before the uh, magic cards came out. One automatically cast spell, which is going to be blue fire, versus one shaman's attempt to dispel, which is this guy here. So he's going to need a five or a six to stop that spell. Doesn't get it. It's a one. So blue fire, d6. Needs to be a high one. It's a good one. Six. Come on, shaman and gores. You are all that we have left in fifth edition. Strength four, so we are going to need fives because toughness five for the Beast Lord, we are assuming. Oh wow, one, two, three, four, five. This shaman has had enough. Zinch is, Zinch is behind him. That is five wounds um, at strength four, so minus one to the armor save. I think it was fives or sixes. It is fives or sixes to save him. He's going to need... Ooh, a whole lot. He's going to need four. Let's see how he does. Oh, he was almost there. Three out of four, which means the last two wounds have been taken off the Beast Lord from Age of Sigma, 
and he goes down as well. It is a bloody, bloody battlefield. I might actually have to clean some of this up so we can see what is left. We'll be right back. There we go, Age Sigma turn two. We're gonna leave our cockatrice where he is because uh, assuming that he was summoned with his Promoto Call Points, so I better take this away. No more Promoto Call Points left. Um, I have been keeping track of the herd stone. We are now 18 inches of minus one, or plus one to the rend, so minus one to the arm save of everyone, but nobody is in range of it as yet. Um, turn three, there's only gonna be one more round after this. So we'll see if it actually has an effect. Um, we'll get into magic first. We have Vile Tides for our Shaman, who is actually in range to use it now. Um, he is going to cast it on the enemy Shaman. Why not? He just killed his Warlord boss on a six. He does get it. Now, Age of Sigma rules means that that Shaman gets to try and dispel on a seven. Let's see how he does. He gets a seven also. Dispelled. So no magic for the shaman this turn. Um, by the way, at this point of the game, I would like to say that um, using two different rule sets at the same time is melting my brain. I don't know about yours, um, but normally in a video like this, you'd have someone say, this is uh, really complicated. So be kind in the comments. Um, not me. Don't be kind in the comments. If I've stuffed something up, if there was a better way to do something, or if I've gotten a roll wrong um, embarrassingly, let me know. Tell me I'm doing a terrible job. Okay, uh, we're gonna get into the movement phase. I think it's only fair that our shamans get prepared for a showdown since the magic is not working for them. Um, the Minotaurs, meanwhile, get in range to also attack these gores. Um, and of course, as someone no doubt is putting in the comments already, this cockatrice should have been summoned at the end of the movement phase, not the beginning of the movement phase. But I have not moved him since, so bleh. there you go. Cockatrice shooting phase. I think the cockatrice has a missile weapon, a 10 inch range gaze of petrification. So on a four up, the target suffers D6 mortal wounds. Who is within 10 inches of Cockatrice? He is going to fire it, of course, at the Gauze. Petrifying Gaze, D6. Mortal Wounds if he gets a 4-up, and he does not get the 4-up. Only gets 2. So, no help in the shooting phase for Age of Sigma. We're going to have to get to the charges, and let's do it. Let's send this Shaman in to fight the other Shaman. I don't know how they stack up stats-wise, because... Age of Sigma or 5th edition. I didn't usually get my shamans in combat. And when I did in 5th edition, they were like shamans with chaos armor, magic items, and super cool items that made them fight really good. So I don't know how they're going to go with zero magic items. Minotaurs, Bulgors. Oh my God, that's never going to stop happening. Try and chuck, oh, snake eyes, they are unable to help. That could be a decisive thing in this round. So we'll get to the combat and we better do the shamans first because the shaman charged. Here's one attack against this shaman here. Let's see how he goes. Oh, he gets his hit. Wasn't quite expecting that. And can he get a three? He can, and of course, in 5th edition, you could not have uh, any sort of armor for a wizard uh, unless you got magic items, and like I said, I didn't because the difference was so huge in points already. So, um, those go straight through. D3 wounds, and he's only rolled one wound, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty safe to say his Shaman Champion has more than one wound. He does, in fact, have three wounds. So, that is our Shaman, down to two wounds. He may as well fight back, uh, because we are doing things in order for 5th edition. So he has one attack also. That's going to be fun. So, uh, weapon skill same as the Shaman, so hitting on fours, and he fails to hit. So, that is unfortunate. 
Here come the Gores, because it's their turn, the Age of Sigmar Gores. Get in there and fight as much as possible. I think all of them pretty much will be able to reach. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And they just made their 20 limit, which gives them the extra attack, which means this could be the one because we are up to a whopping 40 attacks. 20, and of course one for the champion. So I'll reroll all of this again um, and get our totals. Except for one, because there was the champion in there. 10, 11. We have 11 so far. Let's roll the rest of these bad boys. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-four wound uh, hits. We need to get wounds now. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-four dice. Oh, they couldn't possibly stuff this one up like they did last turn. Age of Sigma Argos. Let's go. Let's see how they do. Come the first pile. Needing pause. If I can pick up the second half of this roll. Dropped a few. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve wounds. I don't know how many sixes I can possibly make to save these poor fifth edition goal. Let's see. Okay, we got three, which leaves us with nine wounds for our poor, much beleaguered fifth edition gore. So, uh, two, four, six, eight, and our wounded warrior at the back goes down at last. So a total of five gore have been taken out and that is going to be punishing for their hitting back because they can't fight in more than one rank. So, five attacks are out. One, two, three, four, five, which leaves us with one, two, three, four, and two for the champion. Oh, there's a lot of heavy lifting needed right now. So champion gets his two attacks. Um, one, two, three, four. Let's do it. Fours and fours for the reds, threes and threes for the green. Can they do it? Well, it's it's not bad, they've only dropped one. Okay, here we go, fours and threes, let's see it. Okay, we've got two wounds for the gore and one for the champions. So, they will get fives and sixes to save. They've saved one, one goes down from a regular gore halberd. And the champion, they will get a six to save. They do not. It's just a one. So another one goes down. Oh, this is going to be dicey. I can tell. <laughs> so nothing happens with our shamans for Battle Shock because nobody's won that combat. Uh, over here, on the other hand, we have five for our Age of Sigma guys. And we have two, one rank, two ranks. So we got four. Fifth edition, which isn't as bad as I thought. They only lose by one. However, as we know, um, fifth edition rules, this could be everything. So they lose by one, which means they need a leadership test. Their leadership is seven. There's no general around anymore. So they need to get six or under in order to stay put. Otherwise, they will just run off. But they get their six, and they are standing firm. Ah, oh, the fight continues into Warhammer 5th edition, turn three. Not much to be done, we are locked in combat. We cannot wrap around any further because we lost the previous combat. There is no infighting to take at the start of the turn and no movement because everybody is straight up locked in combat. So we are going to just start chopping back and see how we go killing off some of these gores and keeping our 5th edition Dreams Alive 5th Edition fans. So, one attack apiece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attacks this turn, because it's their turn. 
for the Beastman 5th edition gore. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and two attacks, of course, for the champion. Fours and fours for reds. Threes and threes for the champ, for the green. Let's see how they go. Ah, oh, all of those threes needed to be in the champions, but they weren't. Threes and fours. We got them through, though. We got them through. Fives and sixes for the Gore to save against the normal Beastman attacks, and they save one, and sixes to save. They miss four. Champions attack, only two down, and that is no good. Okay, now, interesting point here. We will have to be fighting simultaneously, the old 5th edition simultaneously, because no one's charged. Um, so, we'll get the Age of Sigmar Gore to punch back immediately and see how that combat goes. They have, I think, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 16. They have been dropped below 20, so they lose their extra attack. So it is just 16 attacks now. They are exhausted taking on their 5th edition brothers. If nothing else, 5th edition has ground them to exhaustion, and they have a champion also, but no difference in rolls, just in an extra attack. So here we go, fours and fours for the gores. Bad. It's not great. It's not bad. Okay, we've got five, six wounds only. Might be bad. Might be bad after all. Fours. Four wounds. It's enough for two gores if I get no sixes. One six. Oh, this could be trouble. Only one gore is taken out. And one is wounded, but does not count. So already, the Gores from 5th edition have won their combat, technically, but they also have ranks, so we'll count them up in a second. We will have our Shaman face-off. I'll start with the 5th edition one this time, fighting simultaneously anyway. One attack, needs a four, got it this time, needs a four, gets it that time. Now, Great Bray Shaman get a save, which is just farcical. Um, however, the Beastman Shaman in this edition, in 5th edition, I think I will find, if I look over here, is Shaman Champion Strength 4. So that will be minus 1 to a save, and the Great Bay Shaman has a save of 6. So, no save, but only one wound, because 5th edition. So our Great Bay Shaman has 4 left before he strikes back with his one attack, needing fours, and getting it, and needing fours, and failing. It is threes to wound for a great Bray Shaman's Bray Staff. It is threes, which means it's D3 wounds. Oh, sorry, 5th edition Shaman, this could be it. And it certainly is. He has had his head ripped off by Age of Sigma Shaman, who is having none of it. Woo! Just caught that one, and that is really looking bad for 5th edition. Um, they're going to have this victory, though. Let's see how they go. Um, they've won by one already. They've got an extra rank, making it two that they win by. That's it, though, because they've spread out so much. They don't have too many extra ranks there. So, Battle Shock for the Age of Sigma Gore, plus two to the roll, and we have six, that makes it seven, eight, against five, five, six, seven, eight. So we have three more runoff Scarpa, which brings us to the ultimate turn, turn four, since fifth edition, we are only playing four turns. Let's see how far this Herdstone is reaching. Not quite far enough to change any of the Battle Shock or Ren situations. Um, bad spot to put it, fellas. Sorry, Age of Sigma. But it was in your deployment zone, so what can you do? All right. These guys were already in combat. Oh, the Shaman. The Shaman has got his stuff to do. He might try Vile Tide on the Gore. Fellas, what else is there to do? 
Wild side needs a six. Gets a six. Okay. D6 mortal wounds to the gore. This is going to be brutal. And we've got four. So, two more. Gore, go down. Even before the fighting starts. Yikes. All right. The bulgors and the cockatrice. Let's move, fellas. So, cockatrice is going to come around the back here. Ready for a rear charge. The bulgors with their seven inch move. They do want to get a charge in, so they're not going to go faster than that. Over here, we get to the charge phase. Wait, shooting phase. Um, so the cockatrice on a four plus. Well, gets it. D6 mortal wounds. One. Takes out the one wounded gore, evening up the back. For the charge, the cockatrice is going to charge in. Six inches. No, it's not. It is out of range. The bulgore, which it was leaving space for, better get this charge off then, hey? Eh? And they do not. What is happening? They only get a four. Yikes. Okay. The gore, stand fast, as it were. All right. Age of Sigma Gore are the only ones who are going to get their swings in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 attacks. It is just as I remember 5th edition grinding down to those big fat units, punching away at each other, trying to see who breaks first. Although, because they're Age of Sigma and they just run off instead of the whole unit getting away, they are standing up to these 5th edition gore more than I am used to. Okay, force to hit and force to win. Can they do it? Can they break this drought? No, they've dropped. They've dropped a whole lot. Three wins. The sixes. No. So, one goes down, one gets wounded. Now, of course, 5th edition, um, just so we know, for those of you that don't play, you take psychology tests from shooting and magic and stuff when you suffer 25%, more than 25% casualties. So that's why we haven't been adding any magic or shooting deaths to our Battleshock tests because they just don't suffer in 5th edition, um, if anyone's wondering about that. So one of them goes down, one can't fight back. We got one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight, instead of nine. Eight sacks, and then two from the gore champion. You know the drill by now. Fours for the reds, threes for the greens. And some wounds. Ah, oh, the champion has dropped them all, just when you thought the fifth edition had some secret powers with their rolls. And to go through, Age of Sigma and their one wounded gauze need a five or a six. They don't get either this time. Ouch. So one, two, go down. And here we are again. I think the rank bonus is slowly waning away, but it hasn't gone completely. So the Beastman 5th edition win by two. Age of Sigma take the roll, but they show no fear this time. Getting a three. And this is going to be the last round summary for the Gores. It's only the Gores left. It's turn four, the last turn. Gores versus Gores. They can't charge. They can't do anything else. They could wrap around further, but they're not going to. They're going to keep that rank if they can. So... No wounded men this time, so we're going to get our nine attacks instead of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus two for our champion. And here we go. Let's see if they can go out in style. Oh, fours and threes. There we have it. Here it comes. Decent amount of hits this time. Oh, there they go. There they go, like the breeze. Two go through. Need a six to save that one for these gores. Did not get it. Need a five or six on this one. Did not get it. And like clockwork, 
We do two wounds once again. Age of Sigma, punching back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And an extra for the champion. And we need fours and fours for the Age of Sigma angles. Can they do it? Oh, possibly not. They need this one. They really do. Just for the pride of it. Sixes to save. And did not get that one guy. Goes down. We still have a rank of four once again, meaning that fifth edition Gores win by two. Age of Sigma. That's a cock dice. It's a one over here though. It's looking good. Five, six, seven, eight. Against the bravery of five. Six, seven, eight. And look at the carnage. That is it. That's it. Let's get an aerial view. That is all that is left of the 5th edition forces. They fought bravely, but we've got Shaman, Bulgors, Cockatrice, and Gors surrounding them, ready to take away their rank bonuses and finally drive them from the field. Nothing left to count up points, but I think we're going to save ourselves the trouble and the 5th edition Beastmen are going to concede this battle to Age of Sigma it was not even close, <laughs> but it was super fun, um, and I'll do it again, no doubt. Might be a little bit easier with someone else, um, so that I'm only doing one rule set at a time. There you have it, all done and dusted. Was it the result that you thought it would be? Um, it was not the result I thought it would be. Um, the Age Sigma guys just dealt out the damage and had the movement to get around the board. 5th edition, um, it's just a regular move of 4 inches which you double to uh, get your charges off. So they were a bit slower, um, they did not have anything that did extra damage, extra stuff, except maybe the magic which did its job, um, which was pretty good. You can see how Warhammer magic and sorcerers were pretty big in 5th edition and also the characters. Um, but yeah, that double-handed axe with the uh, Beast Lord did, did him zero favours. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, did that bring back some memories? Was that traumatising to watch for you 5th edition lovers? Was it vindicating uh, for you Age of Sigmar fans? Most of all, we have it settled once and for all. Not with the Talking Heads video, but actually playing Age of Sigmar versus Warhammer 5th edition. Age of Sigmar, this time, was the winner.